everybody and welcome to the flute practice. Today we are going to be looking at some fun creative ways to practice our scales. We are going to be kind of dividing this into two sections. On the one hand we're going to be looking at how to really kind of perfect the scales and how to kind of work out those tricky finger combinations and on the other hand we're going to be looking at how to kind of get to grips with the scales as a whole, like how to kind of master playing through different scales one after the other. So let's go check it out. <laughs> So you always really want to practice your scales in small bits at a time. I find sometimes if you're thinking about playing the whole scale, like full two octaves in one go, it can get too overwhelming. So whether it is just playing five notes at a time, so maybe you're just beginning and you're going to play F major and you're just going to play and you're even just going up and down from there. So just five notes, or maybe you just play an octave at a time, so you do your first octave. And then once you get good at that, you do your second. The other really good tip from this is to just practice the top of your scales. Those are often the most tricky bits, going kind of over the top and back down. So perhaps you want to start, say we're doing F major again, we want to start on the C and we're just going to go up. And you just practice that turnover top. Especially for your minor scales, this gets quite tricky at the top there with the sort of change over. So sometimes just practicing the top is also a really great plan. What is really great is to practice your scales in different articulations. This helps so much to not just get kind of bored and monotonous about it, but to keep it interesting and at the same time practice your articulation. So perhaps you want to practice it on double tonguing, you want to maybe do different so or whatever it might be. Maybe you want to do triple tonguing even if you're feeling bold. So there's so many amazing things you can do with these scales. I never want you to think about, I'm practicing my scales now. Yes, you're practicing your scales, but you can do so much more with them. And that is always the goal. A method that I really like using for practicing scales is to just kind of move between two notes at a time. Just really figuring out where the finger combination problems are. So just sticking with F major right now. And so on and so forth till you get right to the top and wherever you find those little hooks ah this finger combination is not quite smooth or even then you know that that just needs to be kind of worked out for a few days until it starts to feel more comfortable it's a really 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 wonderful method and it's wonderful because you're kind of practicing your scales up and down when you're doing that by by kind of oscillating between those finger combinations you can also do this with three notes so you can do and so on and so forth. You can do four or five, whatever it might be. Which brings me to my next point, which is using different technical exercises. A very specific one that I like to use is kind of to play an octave at a time and then take a step up at a time. So, oh, we have F major, sorry. I really like that method because I'm kind of practicing that scale each time I step higher over and over and over again. Uh, you can also use different technical exercises. There's so many of these guys, whether it's Tough and El Gobert, um, daily exercises or right hit or whatever it might be. There are tons of these, but they are really helpful for practicing our scales as well because they often kind of isolate little problems or little areas of the scales and sometimes do do the full scales as well, but put it into a kind of fun exercise that often are enjoyable to play. This often happens for people that are doing like these external exams, whether they're Royal Schools, Trinity, uh, I don't know what American exams they are. But very often we have to play these scales, you know, we get told F major, G major, A minor, and we've got to kind of just go and play these on command. And this is a very specific skill and quite a tricky skill to master. But I have some nice tips for this as well. So the first thing I really want to encourage you to do is to really understand your scales. I'm not going to get into the like ins and outs of scales. Hopefully I will do a video on this, but basically you need to understand your scales. You need to understand how many sharps or flats a scale has what is the relative major, what is the raised seventh or the raised sixth and seventh or whatever it might be. If you understand what you're playing and not just reading it, then you are much more likely to actually be able to remember, recall and play it accurately. So a huge part of playing these scales is just 
really understanding what you're playing and knowing what you're playing it's very unlike other instruments like piano or even violin or string instruments where you can see your fingers where it's kind of finger patterns on the flute you have to really know the notes you are playing because your fingers are always playing the same keys you know they're always playing the same notes so you can't just rely on kind of finger patterns or on muscle memory as much so it's no good kind of starting your scale and just launching straight into it and this kind of goes into my next point which is always stop think about the scale okay figure out what are the rate you know raised sevenths and the relative majors and whatnots and then play and take a moment just to kind of gather yourself gather your thoughts if you practice like this it becomes easier and easier to recall your scales until eventually it's just in your long-term memory you don't even have to think about it anymore a really fantastic technique that i used was practicing my scales without playing so i just do either without the flute completely or you sit with the flute and you basically just say the note names out loud now i'm going to take quite a tricky scale just to make a kind of point here so um for example i'm gonna take e flat minor so we have e flat f then we have g flat so not f sharp it's g flat we say because we have to have you know each note in the scale needs to be there we can't have double notes and we can't skip over notes so we can't go a b d we have to have a b c somewhere in there in some form or another so we're going to have E flat, F, G flat, A flat, B flat. Then we've got C flat, which is the same fingering as B, but we don't say B flat, B. We say C flat, D flat, E flat. I think I did the natural minor there. Yeah, or D natural in the case of the um, harmonic minor. It's quite tricky, it's quite taxing, and it really tests whether or not you know your scales. But I promise you, if you sit and go through your scales like this, and then try and play them, they are so much easier, and they are much more accurate. So really, really, really good system to make sure you really know your scales. Once you kind of get into grips with your different scales, a fantastic technique is using scale cards. I love these guys. So you can buy some sets of this. Um, I am going to be dropping some links to this below that you can get on Amazon, but you can make them yourself as well. You just take some paper and you just write the scales onto the cards and then you write like slurred and tongued or whatever, you know, different, whether it's different dynamics or whatever the requirements are. And then what you do is you start going through that pack at random and just playing whatever scales put in front of you. Then what I like to do is I have kind of three piles. The one pile is like, I know these 100%, I'm great at these. The other pile is like, they were kind of mostly there. Maybe there was like one wrong note or a bit of sound wasn't great or struggling with it, you know, jumps or whatever it might be. And then there's the pile, which is like, I have no idea. I really don't know these scales. And I start practicing from that pile. I start with the, I really don't know these scales pile and I work my way back. Obviously those that you know 100%, you're like, cool, leave them alone. And I do this for quite a few days, especially coming up to like a big exam or whatever it might be. And really making sure that I know how to just recall these scales. It's quite a fun game to play. Even if you don't have an exam coming up, it's a really good thing to be able to know your different scales and identify them. For the simple reason that when they come up in your pieces, you can just say to yourself, oh, that's just an F major scale or that's just E flat minor scale. And you just play the scale and you don't actually have to worry about reading the music so intently because you know the patterns. So they really are very useful. The last thing that I think is something that we just don't think about with scales very often is to really make sure you play with a beautiful big sound that you phrase nicely to the top of the scale. If you're going to breathe at the top, take a nice good breath and back down and that you do it with confidence. It's so, so, so important. Beautiful sound and confidence. It makes such a difference when we just playing a scale and I, you know, the examiner says, OK, F major. And you take a moment to think about F major. You think of that B flat. And with confidence and good sound, you just go. Makes such a difference. And I promise you, when you start phrasing your scales and playing with beautiful sound, that is when you really start scoring those beautiful, wonderful high marks. So don't forget to be musical about your scales too. All right, everybody, I know we all kind of dread these scale business and uh, practice your scales, but they actually can be a lot of fun. Uh, they're incredibly useful and helpful for helping us grow as musicians, helping us grow as flute players, helping extend our you know abilities on the flute and our techniques. So I really just encourage you to have fun with them and practice them. And remember, they can be used for so many different things, as I have often spoken about. I am going to be doing a series with my patrons on a weekly kind of technical exercises that we're going to start working through some of these exercise books if you would like to get involved in this i'm going to post the link to that below and you can 
join the Patreon system and be a part of this journey. Until then, everybody, happy practicing and see you next time.